Matt Caracity, Jose Godoy. I, I never heard of these guys. Matthew Boyd. Who are these fucking guys? And he drives it into right center field, hit a ton. This baby is way back. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Hum Baby Baseball channel. This is Eric and the Giants have signed more depth for their rotation. Now that intro was a joke, so don't be offended because I actually am pretty happy about the offseason so far. Obviously there have been some no-name signings, but there's also been some good signings. Bringing back Wood, bringing back DeSclafani, and then also signing Cobb, Rendon, not Rendon, but Rod Rodon, sorry. That's a solid four, and then you throw in our man, Logan Webb, into the mix, and he could have a massive year. And then I mentioned Alex Cobb, who obviously had a good season with the Orioles last year. He's also had some tough years in the past, but the Giants have tended in the last year or two to grab pitchers who have not been great lately, and all of a sudden they come over here, and they're fantastic. It has happened over and over and over. Kevin Gosman was not the biggest signing in the world when the Giants signed Gosman. Neither was Drew Smiley, and he was he was freaking excellent. He did get hurt quite a bit, but he was really good when he was out there. Had a great strikeout ratio. Ended up signing for a lot more after he left the Giants. So that was just a couple examples right there, and there have been more. The Giants will tend to grab these guys. Wood is an example. Di Sclafani is an example. Guys that weren't anything overly special. I mean, yeah, Wood was great back in 2017, but he looked like he was kind of washed up. Comes over here, and he's fantastic. So, who knows? Um, now, Matthew Boyd is hurt right now. We won't be seeing him for a while, but that's fine because by that time, the Giants rotation certainly is going to have injuries, and guys are going to be falling on the IL. Every one of these guys in the rotation will spend time on the IL, even if they stay healthy. Giants will just throw them on the aisle just to give them an arm a little, a little, a little vacation. So it's going to happen. Giants are going to need massive depth in the rotation. We have guys, we have prospects who could be ready as well to help. And now Matthew Boyd, who has not had the prettiest statistics in the history of Major League Baseball. We'll look at those statistics. But again, Giants tend to get the best out of pitchers, at least lately. So the Giants, one-year deal. Matthew Boyd, left-handed pitcher. Tigers, you know, former Tigers hurler. He's going to be guaranteed $5.2 million and can earn 2.3 in incentives. I love the incentive deals. You know, these guys get, go out there, start, pitch a certain amount of innings you know, perform at a certain level, you get more money, up to $2.3 million. So Boyd, represented by the Boris Corporation, he turned 31 last month, not super old, not super young, underwent season-ending surgery to repair a torn flexor tendon last September and said in February he's targeting an early June return to the mound. So he's going to be sidelined for a couple months, but he'll give the Giants that mid-season boost in the rotation. And, you know, who knows if he's going to work out or not. We could go out there and stink it up. Could end up there getting, you know, Sacramento, you know, DFA, you know, all kinds of things can happen. I'm sure he's going to start in Sacramento on rehab, but he has shown flashes of brilliance in his career, and he is on the cusp of breaking out as an upper echelon starter. At least that's what this article said. He looked to be on the cusp, carried a 3.44 ERA through early June before an injury knocked him out of a June 14th start. Yeah, he's been up and down, um, but... Last year wasn't the only intriguing and promising stretch of his career. In 2019, he had an ERA of 3.08, 2.98 FIP with an elite strikeout and walk rate through mid-June, prompting him to be regarded as one of the most sought-after trade candidates on the market that season. He was sitting at a 3.94 ERA, 32.5% strikeout rate, 5.3% walk rate, and by the time the trade deadline line rolled around, he ultimately remained in Detroit, he can miss bats, he can limit walks. I mean, he's got all that. But let's just jump into the dude's actual stats and tell you what I'm talking about. I mean, he's been around for a while. You go back to 2015, and you just kind of glance at it, and you see a lot of uh, double-digit losses. You see some bold losses. You see some ERAs over 6, here over 14, only two starts, but still here over 7. Okay, here over five, and you're really mostly hanging here in the in the 4.3, 4.5 range. Only last year was it okay, but still three and eight. I know wins and losses don't mean everything. Three and eight, um, it's just not that pretty. I mean, in complete games, 
two his entire career. I know this ain't 1890, but still, two complete games, one shutout in his entire career. Clearly, the dude has never made an all-star team. This dude's not a, any, he's not even he's not even close to an ace or anything like that, uh, in my opinion. I know he's got good stuff. I understand he's got a good strikeout ratio, you know, 8.7. A little less than, you know, one per inning, but about one per inning. And in 2019, it was 11.6. He's, he's, he's a guy who can be filthy for limited amounts of time. He has walked 248 batters in his career to 759 strikeouts. That is a walk ratio of 2.8 per nine. Okay, so the guy to me is depth. I don't know. You know, if, if the Giants can get something out of him and he can come have a breakthrough year with the Giants after he gets off the IL, that would be fantastic. Or if he could just come in, give us some solid starts just to kind of Keep the team going while guys come off the IL. That'll be fine as well. Um, but it is more depth. Let me know what you guys think of the move. I mean, I, I don't think uh, anybody's overly excited about Matthew Boyd. But he is someone who at times has, you know, has been a name out there at the trade deadline. When he's hot, he can be hot. Uh, is he going to be hot coming right off of the IL? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, it could happen. You know, sometimes guys are on a long break. Sometimes they come back and, you know, their mechanics are clicking and everything is good. But other times, obviously, it's terrible. Uh, we had have guys right now who have come off Tommy John who just can't get it together. I'm thinking about Tyler Beatty. He was supposed to be one of our frontline starters, first-round pick, and he's still not even – we don't even talk about him very much. So I, I have hopes that he can help out this year, but I don't know. But Matthew Boyd has been signed. $5.2 million. That's, that's a lot of money, actually, for uh, – uh, for a guy like Matthew Boyd, who's going to spend a, a couple of the months on the year on the IL, to be honest, I mean, $5.2 million. We just signed a guy who we're extremely happy about in Jock Peterson for just a little bit more than that. And that's Jock Peterson. So uh, I don't know if I would have shelled out $5.2 million, but it's not my money. So I'm glad to have more depth. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Happy St. Patrick's Day. You guys hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. We'll talk to you next time.